Infernape, Infernape, Infernape. Ash Ketchum's ace Pokemon in the Diamond and Pearl series, Infernape is considered to be one of the best written Pokemon characters in the anime, totally unmatched when it comes to its story, development, and complexity. This is Complete History, where we tackle the entire story of various trainers and Pokemon throughout their time in the anime that we all know and love. In this video, we are breaking down the complete history of Ash's Infernape as it appeared throughout the Pokemon anime. This is Paul, a skilled Pokemon trainer with keen knowledge on Pokemon stats and battle mechanics. However, he does have an interesting way of raising his Pokemon. Take a hike. I don't need you. That's all you've got? Residing in one of his Pokeballs is a cute little Chimchar. With a heart of gold and a fiery spirit, the only thing Chimchar would love is to battle its best and make its trainer proud. In a battle with the Battle Frontier Victor, Ash Ketchum, and his Apom, Chimchar unfortunately gets destroyed with a single Focus Punch. This results in another scolding from Paul. You're still just as useless as can be. So in their next battle, Chimchar seeks redemption and beats Ash's Turtwig. Chimchar happily celebrates in its victory, but for Paul, it's nothing to be proud of, saying that Chimchar is still pathetic. Where have I heard that before? Just pathetic. You're so pathetic. You're both pathetic. You're pathetic, just like always. The next time we see Chimchar is during its gym battle against Rourke. Here, Chimchar is able to defeat Onyx after the Rock Snake was slowed down by Elegant Static. But when it's time to battle Cranidos, Chimchar gets flinched by a series of Zen Headbutts. Not long after, Chimchar's body fires up, activating what Paul has been waiting for all this time, its ability Blaze. A blazing Chimchar begins to turn the tide in Paul's favor, even managing to deal severe damage to Cranidos' leg. However, Cranidos finds its footing and finishes Chimchar off with Dig. As Paul recars Chimchar back into its Pokeball, this is what he has to say. Chimchar, I'll deal with you later. What a threatening and insensitive remark to say to a fainted Pokemon. Elekid will later defeat Cranidos, winning Paul the Kobadge, but Chimchar definitely put up a lot of work in the battle and deserved a lot more credit. Later on, Chimchar once again gets Oko'd when it battles Cynthia's Garchomp, like obviously, and in the Pokemon Center, Paul calls Chimchar a spoiled Pokemon who doesn't try hard enough, probably a comment that a little chimp has heard countless times. But good thing Cynthia is there to keep things civil and takes care of Chimchar and gives him words of comfort. Despite multiple failures to reach Paul's expectations and seeing Paul release Pokemon after Pokemon when they fail him, it seems that Paul still has hope for Chimchar, hoping that someday Chimchar is going to battle in a way that meets his standards. And so Paul joins the Hard Home Tag Battle in which he is paired with Ash of all people. According to Paul, he joined this tournament to encounter more Fire type Pokemon because he believes that a Fire type may just bring out the best in Chimchar. In the first round, Ash and Paul send Pikachu and Chimchar against Magmar and Rhydon. When Magmar uses Lava Plume, Paul commands Chimchar to dive straight into the fire to power up its own flamethrower. Next turn, Rhydon uses the powerful Surf, and Paul being Paul tells Chimchar to use Flame Wheel against the Surf, which is totally going to cost him the battle. Good thing Ash comes up with an idea to use Iron Tail to shift the direction of Surf and land the fatal blow on Rhydon's head. And as Pikachu collides his Volt Tackle with Magmar's Fire Punch, Chimchar goes on to assist and finish it off with Dig. At night, Ash's attention is caught by a blazing flamethrower somewhere in the woods. They find out that it's actually Paul who's trying to train Chimchar by letting the Chimp withstand some powerful attacks to power up Chimchar's own attacks. Unfortunately, Chimchar loses control due to exhaustion, launching his attack onto Ash instead. Ash angrily points out that instead of letting his Pokemon suffer, Paul should help his Pokemon improve more by using their strong points. But Paul reveals that he actually doesn't treat all his Pokemon like this, and that it's Chimchar who actually wants this. But when Paul's training continues to even be more severe to the point of Paul wanting to use Thunder on a fainted Chimchar just to wake it up, Ash and Pikachu decide to intervene and bring Chimchar to the Pokemon Center. Brock gives it the necessary treatment and asks Paul why he's pushing Chimchar so hard. It is here when Paul talks about the day he met Chimchar. A troop of Zangus is chasing after it, probably due to a fight for food or territory. But as the little monkey faces the edge of a cliff, trapped and frightened by the angry faces of these bloodthirsty Zangus, Chimchar responds by activating its blaze ability and destroying every single Zangus with his flame wheel. Paul notices the incredible power that this Pokemon possesses with a strength and stamina like no other, and so he decides to bring Chimchar with him. But ever since that day, Paul was never able to bring that power out of Chimchar again, and that's why he's trying several methods to recreate the stress that Chimchar experienced during that time. Nurse Joy insists on giving Chimchar some rest, but we'll see. Moving on to the next day where Paul again uses a still exhausted Chimchar alongside Ash's Turtwig against a Metagross, and what do you know, a Zangus of all Pokemon. The opposing team does an amazing job working together and counting all their attacks. But when Zangus charges for a Crush Claw, Chimchar shivers in immobility, giving flashbacks to the Zangus he faced back then. Good thing Turtwig is there to stop it. Paul then recklessly commands Chimchar to use Flame Wheel on Turtwig in order to deal some critical damage on Metagross, much to Chimchar's reluctance. Chimchar still experiences PTSD from Zangus, and so Paul just gives up on Chimchar mid-battle, leaving everything to Ash. 
Ash now has to command both Chimchar and Turwig, and yet he manages to win this battle all by himself. After the battle, Paul finally decides to release Chimchar after months of failures of trying to bring out the power within him. Paul leaves right away as Ash, Don, and Brock try to convince him to not let go of Chimchar, but to no avail. Chimchar sorrowfully walks into the forest, probably not knowing where to go. But then Ash, with all his heart in an optimistic manner, screams at Chimchar, telling him to join his team. Chimchar is flabbergasted by this offer, trying to decide on Ash's proposal. After Paul lets out more insulting words, and Ash says some more inspiring ones, Chimchar reaches his hand to Ash, signaling that he chose Ash to be his trainer. Oh yeah, let's just pretend that Team Rocket didn't ruin this moment. Ash, of course, lets Chimchar rest for the next round, as he and Paul will actually only Paul manage to defeat Brock and Holly, advancing them to the final round. Here they face Don and Conway, and Ash wants to finish his tournament with no one else but Chimchar. This is Chimchar's first official battle with Ash as his trainer, and it's clearly different from Paul's harsh techniques. It's an amazing back and forth, but Don and Conway seem to have the upper hand. But when Paul's Elected evolves, both Chimchar and Electabuzz individually deal the final attack against Heracross and Buizo, winning the battle for the most unlikely of duos. What do they win for winning the tournament? A subscription to this channel, and you can win yours for free by clicking the red button. Not long after, the gang is having a nice lunch in the middle of their adventure. All of their Pokemon are out, happily working together to help cook, set the tables, practicing their moves, and just enjoying their everyday life. Chimchar gets a flashback of the hostile lunches with Paul, and even a sweet pat on the head scares him thinking that it's going to hurt. Chimchar is absolutely shocked with how happy and fun Ash's group is, and how well they treat their Pokemon with care and respect. Totally unlike Paul's training methods. Next, it's Chimchar's turn to have a practice battle with Piplup, and when Piplup wins the battle, Chimchar gets scared that he's going to get abandoned again, as if Chimchar has developed the fear of failure. But Ash and everybody else cheer him up, pointing out how amazing he was during the battle. This causes Chimchar to ball uncontrollably on Ash's shoulders, releasing a lot of the negative energy he's been feeling in the past few months with Paul. Later that night after a bad nightmare about Paul and Zangus, Chimchar decides to go for a walk and that's when he stumbles upon Meowth. With no ill intentions attached, Meowth and Chimchar spend a wonderful evening having a deep conversation under the bright shining moon. The next day, Team Rocket manages to steal all of the gang's Pokemon except for Chimchar who went to get water with Ash. But a group of Zangus burst Team Rocket's balloon because of the never-ending rivalry with Jesse Viper. Chimchar is the only one who can save the day, so despite its extreme fear of Zangus, Chimchar is encouraged by Ash to conquer his fears and rescue everyone. Chimchar goes on to challenge some of the remaining gyms alongside Ash. In the Veostone gym battle, Chimchar is able to deal some massive damage against Maylene's Meditite and Lucario, allowing his teammates to score the win. In the Har Home gym, Chimchar redeems himself by successfully using the Counter Shield and knocking out both Fantina's Miss Magius and Driftblim. In the Kanalava gym, Chimchar again defeats two Pokemon, Byron's Bronzor and Celix, before being taken out by his Bastionon. And in the Snowpoint Gym, Chimchar skates his way to victory, defeating, I forgot her name, Snover, and Ace Pokemon Obama Snow, winning Ash the Icicle Badge. Seriously, I forgot her name. Can you let me know in the comments below? Along the way, the gang meets up with Paul again, as Ash and Paul argue about each other's way of training their Pokemon. And after Ash and Chimchar's insistence, Paul agrees to settle their fight with the battle. Paul quickly wins round 1 as Gliscor one-shots Gligar. Next round is Chimchar vs. Ursaring. Ursaring lands one attack after the other, and when Secret Power causes Chimchar to flinch, we learn that it's not only Secret Power that's causing the flinch. Something deeper is scaring Chimchar to fight back. Hallucination of Ursaring's ferociousness are terrifying Chimchar in an immense level he's never felt before. And with that, Chimchar blacks out and activates Blaze, an even more powerful Blaze, the same one, no, a stronger one than what Paul saw during his first encounter with Chimchar. As Brock says, this time Chimchar is getting cheered on and supported by his Pokemon friends. And with Chimchar wanting Ash to win so badly, combined with him wanting to show Paul his true strength, all these stresses have pushed Chimchar beyond its limit, unleashing extremely massive power. A fully powered flame wheel knocks out Ursaring. Despite the battle being over, the power of Blaze must have taken over Chimchar, and now he's uncontrollable and will not listen to what anyone says. He attacks everything in its path and starts burning the forest around them. Ash quickly embraces Chimchar, telling him to stop, trying his best to endure Chimchar's struggle. Eventually, one more scream for Ash gets through Chimchar, bringing him back to his senses, but the chip is still frightened by what just happened. Now that Blaze has been activated, Ash's next mission is to help Chimchar control it. In an encounter with Team Galactic, Chimchar gets immobilized by Saturn's Toxicroak after protecting Pikachu. And in the Pokemon Center, Cynthia notices that Ash's Chimchar is the same one that Paul had. She senses that the little guy has been through so much with both its trainers. It is here where Cynthia links the old saying, when every life meets another life, something there will be born, to Chimchar's relationship with Ash and Paul. She says that it's important for Chimchar to watch over both Ash and Paul as their journey in the future, since they for sure have learned and grown a lot after multiple interactions with each other. Ash and Paul's next battle takes place in Lake Aquiti, as per Reggie's suggestion. It's a 6v6 battle with so much at stake having both Ash and Paul's pride on the line. Paul dominates his battle with his Earthstring defeating three of Ash's Pokemon. But as soon as Chimchar enters the battlefield, he quickly takes Earthstring out for a second time. And with that, Chimchar finally evolves into Monferno. Paul sends out his Electabuzz, and they engage in a pretty intense battle, but it is Electabuzz who comes out victorious, winning the battle with four Pokemon left. 
This loss hurts Ash and Monferno so much, but with the help of their friends, they eventually recover from their depressive state. Next is Ash's sparring match versus Barry. After Team Rocket interrupts their battle, Monferno once again activates Blaze in order to rescue Ash and his friends. But just like before, Monferno still can't control himself attacking Ash and everything that it can. And just like before, Ash hugs Monferno to stop him, enduring the heat, and reminds him of the promise that they made with each other to get stronger together. Paul steps in to stop Team Rocket's machine from crashing down since Monferno still couldn't calm down, but as Electabuzz couldn't hold on any longer, Monferno runs to provide assistance and during the process he uses Blaze energy and evolves into Infernape. In the Sunny Shore gym, Ash and Flint have an exhibition battle for Volker to watch. Here, Ash's Infernape battles Flint's Infernape, but it's easily defeated by it. When it's time for Ash to officially battle Volkner for the second time, Ash uses Infernape very effectively. It takes out Volkner's Jolteon without much sweat, but Luxray proves to be a tough opponent for him. Infernape almost faints at one point, and Luxray is ready to land the finishing blow. Fortunately for Ash, Blaze activates, causing Infernape to freak out and destroy a significant portion of the gym. Infernape then starts walking towards Ash, but Ash believes in Infernape, and Infernape knows it. The Fiery Monkey gives a nice grin and goes back into the battlefield to finish what he started, winning Ash his 8th and final gym badge for the Sinnoh League. This is the 4th gym battle in a row where Infernape defeats 2 of the gym leader's Pokemon. In what is considered to be one of the best league arcs of all time, Ash saves Infernape for his battle with Paul in the quarterfinals. As we all expected, Infernape is the start of the battle. Ash sends Infernape as his second Pokemon against Paul's Aggron. After burning Aggron with Flare Blitz, Infernape proceeds to score Ash the first one with his Mach Punch. Infernape is recalled afterwards and is called back later to the battle against Ninjask. Up until this point, Ash's team is played by Drapion's Toxic Spikes. And so Infernape is instructed to dig underground and unleash a powerful Flare Blades to vaporize all the Toxic Spikes away from the field. Ninja's most threatening attribute is its speed, so Infernape uses its concentration skills to keep track of Ninja's movements and KO it with a powerful Mach Punch. And fun fact, Paul caught Ninja's the same day that he caught Chimchar. Infernape's final appearance in the League arc is against Paul's Electivire, with both Pokemon being the last resort for their trainers to advance to the semifinals. This is Infernape's most important battle ever, and they both give an incredibly intense battle, one for the ages. Near the end, Electivire heavily enters Infernape with Thunder, causing the referee to declare Infernape unable to battle. But before he's able to finish his sentence, Paul and Electivire provoke Infernape to get up. Paul once again calls Infernape pathetic, and whether he is motivating or discouraging Infernape, it eventually works in Ash's favor, as Infernape stands up to continue battling. Blaze is activated, the most powerful Blaze we've ever seen, and after a final clash between Flare Blitz and Thunder Punch, it is Infernape who remains standing, advancing Ash to the semifinals, finally defeating Paul in an official battle, and finally showing him how strong he's become. In the end, Cynthia points out that a connection is born when Ash and Paul met each other's lives. Both trainers started hating each other, but after interacting and battling with each other, they both learned a lot and grew so much, eventually finding mutual respect for one another. And the one thing that made everything possible is Infernape, the very heart of the rivalry, the center of Ash and Paul's story, the main character of the Diamond and Pearl series. During his time in Professor Oak's Corral, Infernape befriended Ash's other Pokemon, particularly making strong bonds with the other Fire-type Pokemon. In Pokemon Journeys, it is said that Infernape challenged every one of Ash's Fire-types in a battle, except Torkoal. Infernape then goes missing and Gary reveals that the monkey went to look for and challenged Moltres. Then in the valley near Pallet Town, Infernape shouts a battle cry, calling for Moltres, and lo and behold, the legendary bird appears and accepts the challenge. Obviously, Infernape stands no chance against the Moltres, but it is still a great experience about a legendary Pokemon. At the end of the day, Infernape excitedly shares a story about his date to his fiery friends and Bulbasaur. Poor Torkoal still didn't get the invite. Just before the Masters 8 tournament, Ash visits Professor Oak's lab where he reunites with Infernape. Ash's journey team bonds with his other Pokemon, and Gengar quickly forges friendships with the fire types, with Torkoal finally being invited. Infernape and his friends help Gengar practice to master Will-O-Wisp, and Paul is here too. Infernape has a quick and nice interaction with Paul before carrying Professor Oak back to his lab. Infernape spends the rest of the day watching Ash practice battle with Paul. And in the Masters 8, Infernape is one of the most active Pokemon cheering for Ash to win, as he, Professor Oak, Tracy, Delia, and the rest of Ash's Pokemon are watching Ash's greatest battles on TV. I know many of us wanted Infernape to battle Cynthia's Garchomp, but I guess this story was perfectly close in DP, and I'm happy if it remains that way. Infernape's final appearance in the Pokemon anime is in the Rocket Revengers episode, where Team Rocket executes the final plan to capture Pikachu. Infernape and Halucha battle against Jesse's Gorgias and James Carnivine, and he proceeds to protect Pikachu and Team Rocket's evil attempts. Infernape is undoubtedly the best written Pokemon character in the anime, that is no question. He's the protagonist, the star, the center of the Diamond and Pearl saga. A Pokemon who showed incredible potential from the very beginning. Infernape has gone through so much, from Paul's to Ash's polar opposite training methods. Throughout the series, we've seen Infernape suffer from and overcome emotional trauma. He conquered Blaze by trusting his trainer and knowing that his trainer has complete faith in him. Infernape carried Ash in gym battles and was the MVP of Ash vs. Paul in the Sinnoh League. Infernape is the very one that catalyzed a strong connection between two skilled trainers with opposing viewpoints. 
and as a result, Infernape allowed both of them to change for the better, adapting each other's values and battle sires into their own. Infernape's story is basically the closest we've gotten to perfection. Do you love Infernape? If so, comment down below your favorite episode of the Fire Monkey, or at least let me know your favorite moment. Thank you all so much for voting Infernape in the last poll, and if you want your favorite character to be featured in the next video, make sure to like and subscribe so you can be notified of the upcoming poll. Thank you so much for watching this video, and as always, it's been your boy Luap, and I'm out. Peace.